Hey everybody, it's me, Steve Schnee, the CD Junkie. On this episode of CD Junkie, I'm going to be talking about an amazing British singer-songwriter by the name of Stephen Duffy. Now, Stephen Duffy has been in the music business for over 40 years. A lot of people don't know who he is. That might be because he's gone through many different guises over the years, but those who love his music and adore him will follow any guys he wants to record under just as long as he's recording music. So this is going to get a little confusing. There's a lot of stuff here. So I'm going to try to cram it down as quick as possible because I've got a medley at the end of this video that's going to sort of show you his musical progression throughout the years. So let's get started. Now, Stephen Duffy actually was one of the original members of Duran Duran. Him, John Taylor, and Nick Rhodes formed the band in the 1978 or so. And actually, Nick Rhodes and Stephen Duffy were starting to write songs. Now, Stephen Duffy quit the band long before Simon Le Bon came along and the band got signed and went global. But Stephen Duffy was there on the ground floor. The next band that he was in, this is actually the newest CD I'm going to show you today, is The Hawks. And the CD is called Obviously Five Believers. Now, this spans the years 1978 to 81. They were originally called Obviously Five Believers. Then they changed their name to the Subterranean Hawks. Then they became the Hawks. Now, sonically, this album isn't the greatest thing if you're looking for high fidelity. These were actually recordings from 78 to 81. I believe they were digitally transferred from a cassette. The, the only existing recordings by this band, Stephen Duffy and Dave Cusworth were sort of the main two guys in the band. Dave actually went on uh, and joined the Jacobites with Nicky Sudden and actually, I believe, released a couple solo albums. He passed away in 2019. But before he died, he had a couple conversations with Stephen Duffy asking Stephen to go into the vaults, try to find these songs and release them. And of course, Stephen did. So this just came out these are the earliest Stephen Duffy recordings that I have in my collection. Like I said, they're recorded between 1978 and 1981. Very post-punk, uh, but very melodic, edgy guitar. If you love music from that era, and if you love Stephen Duffy, you're definitely going to dig this. Now, Stephen Duffy's main claim to fame was in 1983. Under the band name Tin Tin, he released a single called Kiss Me, which did pretty well in the UK, but it just turned into a big hit here in the US and the clubs and stuff. And uh, they released one other single, but Tin Tin didn't actually put out an album. But in 1985, Stephen Tin Tin Duffy did. And this has a re-recording of Kiss Me, and it's got some great songs on it. Now, this was one of those, you know, 80s, new wavy, synthesizer type pop albums uh, with a little more depth than you were used to at this time. You know, he, his, his songwriting was more sophisticated, and it wasn't just an album full of Kiss Me uh, rewrites. I mean, there were songs like Wednesday Jones and But Is It Art and She Makes Me Quiver, these songs that were beyond what Kiss Me was. Uh, but this was his first album. This is the album that a lot of people know him by. Now, there is a deluxe version that Cherry Red put out, but I unfortunately have not been able to afford it since it's so pricey on the collector's market. But I do have this one, so I'm happy until I find that deluxe edition. 1986, he put out the album Because We Love You, another great record. This is the album that really showed the depth of his songwriting. I mean, there was a song called I Love You and Unkiss That Kiss. These are great uh, frothy pop songs. But then when you get to Sunday Supplement, Julie Christie, there's a depth and emotion to that kind of songwriting that very few artists at the time were able to achieve. And it proved that he wasn't this 80s one trick pony. This is the album that made me realize that, hey, this guy is not your average 80s pop star. That same year, he released an album under the name Dr. Calculus, which is just sort of experimental, instrumental, electronic stuff. Never been released on CD, so I won't discuss it. But I will discuss this compilation called They Called Him Tintin, which contains songs from both of the albums I showed, plus Dr. Calculus, plus some rarities. So this would be definitely something to get into if you want to get into his early 80s stuff. Now, one day, must have been early 1987, maybe mid-1987, I was at Tower Records in Buena Park, and they played this single. It was this sort of upbeat a very sort of country-esque song called Return to Yesterday. And I recognized the voice right away. So I said, who is this? And they said, it's a band called The Lilac Time. So I checked the credits. And of course, Stephen Duffy was the leader of The Lilac Time, along with his brother, Nick Duffy. Now, The Lilac Time expands on that great songwriting that he was showcasing on the album, Because We Love You. This was really a great step forward. Uh, it was a mixture of British and American folk uh, and rock. And absolutely fantastic great stuff worlds away from tintin and this is the version with uh bonus tracks 
1989, they follow that up with Paradise Circus, another great folky country rock album, which is just fantastic. Such a great songwriter. He was growing in leaps and bounds with every record. It's fantastic. Again, here's a version with bonus tracks. 1990, out comes the album that a lot of people really know Lilac Time for, and it's called Love for All. And this is just this great, boisterous pop classic. Some of the songs were produced by Andy Partridge from XTC, while the rest of the album was produced by John Leckie. So this was really their big commercial sounding record. It was bombastic, but still filled with those melancholy melodies that Stephen Duffy was really growing into. Great pop hooks. And this again is the expanded edition with bonus tracks. After that album, they left the Fontana label, but there is a two CD compilation out called Compendium, the Fontana Trinity. And this features tracks from all three of those albums plus non-album b-side so it's got some rarities on it now the band returned in 1990 with their finest album yet an album called astronauts now the first single off the album was this really sort of manchester dancey song called dreaming which was just okay to be perfectly honest but the rest of the album is gentle melancholic uh gorgeous beautiful acoustic pop just the melodies are these are songs that you feel like you've known a hundred years and, but they're not just like rewrites of stuff that's laying around. You know, you can't go, Oh, he just wrote Waterloo sunset again, or he just wrote, let it be. You can't do anything like that. Cause these songs don't sound like that. You can't link any of these songs to a particular song from the past, but they feel very comfortable, very warm and inviting beautiful lovely melodies uh darkness of her eyes in iverna gardens whisper of your mind uh, just such an incredible collection of songs this came out on the creation records label uh, and this is the version of the reissue that has bonus tracks Stephen Duffy split up The Lilac Time and released a solo album called Music in Colors and this was an interesting album it's a collaboration between Stephen and popular at that time uh violinist Nigel Kennedy, who was more classical, but he had this rock and roll attitude. So he was very popular. Uh, so it's got some uh, Nigel Kennedy interludes in between songs, but the rest of the album is classic, wonderful, Stephen Duffy, uh, honest, warm, heartfelt melodies. Just incredible. This came out in 1993. Now in 1994, um, Bare Naked Ladies put out an album called Maybe You Should Drive. And some of the songs were co-written with Stephen Duffy, including the hit single Jane. So if you like that song, that's kind of going towards what Stephen Duffy was doing at this time. But he resurfaced the next year in 1995, just under the name Duffy. And this is the album that came out. This is a wonderful mix of what he'd been doing with the Lilac Time and Britpop. So it's got a lot of great chunky chords, Great soaring melodies, absolutely in, incredible. If you love the whole Britpop thing, uh, but you want a smarter, more intimate songwriter, uh, definitely check this out. Now, this album did get reissued with bonus tracks, and that's what it looks like there. So either this version or this version with bonus tracks, same album, same wonderful batch of songs. Since Britpop was all the rage and people were talking about Stephen Duffy paying attention to this great songwriter uh, that had been around for years. Uh, he actually formed a band with one of the guys from uh, Blur, uh, Alex James, I believe. And they put out a single under the name Me, Me, Me. And the single was called Hanging Around, but uh, nothing else came from this except uh, this three track single. The next album came out in 1998 and it is called I Love My Friends. Another great collection of songs. This time, not really Britpop. Uh, it's more... Uh, going back to sort of the Stephen Duffy lilac time where it's uh, uh, more intimate, more warm, uh, lovely, beautiful melodies and really heartfelt, honest songwriting. Fan friggin' tastic. Now, this album did get reissued uh, with a new cover. Now, this version does include a couple bonus tracks, but it also includes a bonus CD, which contains demos of songs that didn't make the album. So you get even more Stephen Duffy tracks. The guy can write songs that you just automatically connect with he's so honest so real such a fantastic songwriter anyway him and his brother nick got the lilac time back together and out came looking for a day in the night came out in 1999 this one here has bonus tracks they follow that up in 2001 with lilac six 
And these are just wonderful, you know, they sort of take off where astronauts did, you know, a great mixture of soft, wonderful, warm acoustic songs. Uh, some are, are very sort of mid-tempo melancholic, while some are upbeat and jaunty. It's really fantastic stuff. Now, remember when I told you at the beginning of this episode that he used to be in Duran Duran and him and Nick Rhodes had written some songs? Well, Stephen Duffy found those demos and he actually went to Nick Rhodes and said, hey, let's do something with this. So the Devils is Nick Rhodes from Duran Duran and Stephen Duffy, and they put a full album together featuring updated re-recorded versions of the songs that they had written back in the early Duran Duran days. They didn't change the lyrics or change anything else. They basically re-recorded them with modern equipment and then wrote a few new songs. So Dark Circles by The Devils came out in 2002. Duran Duran fans may want to pay attention, like I said, because it is Nick Rhodes and Stephen Duffy. 2003, Stephen Duffy and the Lilac Time, back with another warm, gentle album. They'll have a banjo or a fiddle or a crying steel guitar, but they're not giving into any genre. You can say, oh, that sounds very Americana or that sounds like British folk, but the melodies are based in great pop music. So you're hearing all these acoustic instruments, but the melodies are straight from pop heaven. Uh, and like I said, you know, when he writes songs that are melancholic, man, it just breaks your heart. Now, in 2005, he was involved in two projects. He co-wrote all the songs on Robbie Williams' album called Intensive Care, and also the songs that he had been writing with Stephen Page from Bare Naked Ladies. Stephen Page had a solo vehicle that he called The Vanity Project, and all the songs that he had written with Stephen Duffy, uh, he recorded on that album. So the Stephen Page album, uh, The Vanity Project, features songs co-written by Stephen Duffy. 2007... <sighs> Run Out Groove by Stephen Duffy and the Lilac Time. Sometimes you connect on the first listen. Sometimes you connect on the third listen. Whatever it is, this is music that just wraps itself around you. It's so beautiful and wonderful. Such an incredibly deep uh, and passionate songwriter. Now, in 2009, there was an album called Sapphire Stylus by Nick Duffy and the Lilac Time. But I've never seen a copy of it, so I can't show it to you on this show. But what I can do is show you this great collection. It's called Memory and Desire, 30 Years in the Wilderness. It has Stephen Duffy solo songs, Lilac Time songs, and is presented across two CDs. Incredible. If you, know, if you can't track down any of the albums or you, if you want to get a fine example of what Stephen Duffy is all about, it, it does go all the way back to the album Because We Love You. Uh, now, the song, of course, uh, he's best known for, you know, for most people is the song Kiss Me by Tintin. Well, Stephen Duffy and the Lilac Time re-record it and it's sort of slow, psychedelic. Uh, it's definitely the same song, but they just give that song a whole new facelift. Uh, and it's actually featured at the end of the medley I'm going to show you in just a matter of minutes. And that was released in 2009. Now in 2015, out comes No Sad Songs, a great Lilac Time album. I'm going to say that because there's not a, a Duff Duffy Lilac Time album in the bunch. It's just incredible. It's just a great songwriter. Continues to grow, continues to add depth to his songwriting. Uh, so much emotion and passion, and every song makes you feel welcome and warm. And then finally, in 2019, out came Return to Us, which is a great new Lilac Time album, but it has a cover very similar to their debut album back from 1987. Anyway, that's it. I've just gone through practically the entire Stephen Duffy solo catalog, including Lilac Time uh, and all the other bands that he's been involved with. Now you get to hear a medley I put together. Now I don't feature songs from every single album, uh, but I just want to show you just what a remarkable songwriter and the journey his songwriting has taken. Uh, so sit back, relax, and listen to some great music by Stephen Duffy. Kiss me with your Across the yawning t- 
First there were Spitfires, then the Beatles We thought the battle had been won Now there's just money, but there's nothing to be shared Amongst the hills of cinema Anyway, that's it. I really appreciate you hanging out. Remember to like, comment, share, subscribe, ring that bell for future notifications. And until the next time, remember me, I'm Steve Snee, the CD Junkie.